Hey, how you doing? So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create the Orton effect in Adobe Photoshop. The Orton effect was created by the photographer Michael Orton. His original technique used two transparencies that were placed on top of each other during the printing stage. One was underexposed and sharp, while the other was overexposed and just out of focus. And this creates a real dreamlike look to an image. So you can see this is the original and the Orton effect gives you this lovely dream look and a lot of landscape photographers use it. So I'm going to walk you through the process. So the first thing we want to do is we want to come to our layers panel and we want to duplicate the background. So you can press Control or Command J and that will duplicate your layer for you. You can name this if you want to. So I'm going to call that Orton effect. And then from there, what we want to do is come down to the bottom and make a levels adjustment. And the idea here is to add loads of contrast. There's lots of ways you can do it. The easiest way is to come up to the default where it says preset and you can increase the contrast here. So I'm going to select increase contrast number three. And what we want to do is increase this contrast even more. Now, depending on your picture it will depend how far you can push this. I don't want to push this too far because I'm going to start really overexposing, but I can push it to around there. Same with the blacks, I'm going to push them in and I can push them in a lot more on this picture. And you can fine tune it by adjusting the gray there as well. So now we've increased the contrast even more, what we want to do is create a clipping mask. So if we come down to the bottom here and select this little square with an arrow through it, click on that. And then you can click on the, the X and just close down that box. So what that's done is this effect that we just created is only now happening onto this layer here, the Autumn Effect layer. So come to this layer, click on it, and then right click. And what we want to do is convert this to a smart object. And the reason why we want to do that is because we can come back to it later and change any settings that we need to. So now what we want to do is add some blur to this. So we're adding the blur to one of the transparencies like Michael did. So come up to filter and then go to blur and then go down to Gaussian blur. And you'll see that with this effect, it can get quite strong. So the recommended limit, I would say, is around 25. That would probably be the, as much as you ever want to go with this. But we want to add a fairly decent amount. So I'm going to go to around 21, 22, around that mark. And then just select OK. Now what the trick is, is to come to the opacity. And we can drop this down all the way down to zero. And the idea of doing that is that you can gradually increase this until you are happy. And again, there is a, a guideline, I suppose. 0 to 25% would be... A standard guideline some images may need more it really comes down to your preference as well so just increase that until you're happy with the effect so you'll start to see the effect and then there'll be a massive drop off of where it starts to go completely blurry so in fact this one here coming up to 37 percent still looks okay to me it might not to others and you can see as i increase that that's just going way beyond what i'd want it to look like so let's drop this down to around 33%. I think that's pretty good. So if we look now, let's come to our history and click on the little camera there. You can see this is the before and this is the after with that effect. And you can see what that does. It really helps to soften the image. Now, because we changed this to a smart object, we can click on the Gaussian blur and we can increase or decrease that depending on what we want to achieve. So that's the whole reason of converting that to a smart object. So let's say okay to that. We can also come back to the levels by clicking on them and we can adjust these again accordingly to what we want. So you can really fine tune this now. That looks pretty good to me. So let's come to the history and just take another snapshot. So you can see there's the before, there's the after. So that's 
the first snapshot that I took with you guys and then this one is the one that I've just finished. So it's a really, really lovely effect and it can have quite a dramatic transformation on your images. Now what I would also recommend is before you do all of this, come to Window and come to Actions and just hit the little record button here. Record all of these steps, then press stop. And then what you can do is create that action so you've got it forever. So if I come back to history, come to the original, all I need to do now with every image that I ever use is come to the Orton effect, click play, and it will do it all for me. I can come into the levels, come to the opacity, and just change that. And I can also come back to the smart filters here and increase any of that and of course I can come back to the levels as well so it gives you full full control of everything so I hope you've enjoyed that I hope that's given you some food for thought try it out it's a really really cool method take care I'll see you in the next video bye bye